Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and good morning. I'm Dr. Sabah Bau from the Physics Section Pusat Pengajian Pendidikan Jarak Jauh University Science Malaysia. This is course JIF 318 Quantum Mechanics. We are in Chapter 5 Linear Algebra Matrices and Direct Notation. In this segment, Unit 5.5, we will be discussing basis sets. The objectives of this segment is for you to be able to describe the basis sets of space vectors. So, basis sets basically represent space vectors. If we have unit vectors x, y, and z, okay, uh, in some courses, maybe the unit vectors are represented by i, j, k. What are unit vectors? Unit vectors are basically a vector with a magnitude of 1. That means unit value. It, the purpose of unit vectors is basically just to show the direction of the vector. So, the unit vectors x, y, z has several properties such as any 3D vectors. x, y, z or i, j, k are for 3 dimensional vector can be expressed as a linear combination of the unit vectors. For example, if you have a vector r here, it is equal to c1 unit vector x plus c2 unit vector y plus c3 unit vector z. Remember that the magnitude of the unit vectors are 1 and the magnitude is actually given by the number c1, c2 and c3. The unit vectors itself is just to show the direction of the unit vector. So, a vector R can be represented by a linear combination. Basically, this is just the addition of all the magnitudes of the unit vectors. In an abstract vector space, a subset of vectors with these properties, every vector can be represented as a linear combination of the vectors in the subset. So, uh, every vectors, that means if you have a vector such and such and such, can be represented by a linear combination of the subset vectors. That means, uh, subset vectors means that vectors containing the unit vectors. The second property is that no one vector in the subset can be expressed as a linear combination of the rest. That means, uh, the the vector the subset vectors here cannot be re represented as a linear combination of the other vectors in the subset. For example, a unit vector x cannot be uh, represented by linear combination of uh, y and z, for example. Okay, so this is what we call a basis. So the the basis of vectors is that the first one. A vector, every vector in fact, can be represented as a linear combination of the subset vectors, that means unit vectors. And no other vector in the subset can be expressed as a linear combination of the other vectors in the subset. Okay, so this is the basis of uh, vectors or vector space. Uh, in general, n and an n-dimensional vector space will have n distinct basis vectors. Uh, yeah, in real life, usually we say that we have three dimension vector space, three dimensional vector space, but theoretically, vector space can have more than three uh, dimensions. Uh, okay, maybe uh, in relativity, we have discussed uh, there is another, the fourth dimension that is time, okay? That is what we call as space-time. Uh, but theoretically, uh, dimension can be more than three or four, okay? So, if you have n-dimensional vector space, there must be n distinct basis vectors, okay? Remember that in a previous segment, we had discussed the relationship between vector space and function. If, for example, if we draw a graph of R against I, where I is the number of dimension, 
if you have three dimensional vector then you have only three points in the graph but if you have many uh, uh, dimensions then basically the the dot representing each vector space can be connected up to form a function so uh, there is a relationship between a function and a, a set of uh, we say n dimensional vector space the basis set x y z has two other desirable properties the basis set containing the unit vectors x y z has two other desirable properties each vector has unit length yeah we know that unit vector the magnitude is one each vector is perpendicular to the other two that means if we, are, we have three dimensional uh, vector space then each vector is perpendicular to the other two it is normal for three dimensional vector space if we can imagine that we have the axis of x y z the three axes are actually perpendicular to each other so in whatever situation each vector should be perpendicular to the other two vectors and this is what we call as autonomous basis okay these two 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 properties in general we can find a basis set for any vector space for any vector space we can find a basis set containing x y z unique vectors but the vector space will not be unique that means some of the vector space may use the same the same uh, basis set okay in 3d in three dimension there are an infinite numbers of autonomous bases even in 3d we have infinite number of autonomous bases apart from x y z perpendicular to each other any vector in between of these three axes uh, can also have autonomous basis obtained by rotating the x y z basis example in this one huh? okay uh, this is actually a vector uh, the z axis or the unit vector z is directly uh, towards z, the z axis but you can see here x plus y and negative x plus y is actually uh, two vectors not exactly lying uh, in the same direction as the axis so it is in between x unit vector x plus y is uh, in the x y plane okay and this one also in the x y plane but the x is negative here but you can be sure that uh, the three uh, basis set here are perpendicular to each other so when we say that autonomous it does not mean that the three set should be uh, in the direction of the x, y, z axis. It can be in between, or even if even if z it has some other values here, z plus y maybe. So the 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 vectors uh, in between the three axes, uh, but you can still obtain autonomous basis. Okay. Even infinite dimensional vector space have basis sets. This means if in the previous slide we were talking about three dimension if you have infinite dimensional vector spaces uh, then all the the vector spaces have basis sets that means when you say basis set that means it can be described as a linear combination of the three subsets which includes the unit vectors x y z okay Example, consider the set of function fx which are predict with period 2 pi. Remember that the vector spaces uh, is related to a function fx. Okay. And periodic with period 2 pi, if the function describe uh, a trigonometric function, usually trigonometric function means that you can imagine that the particle is rotated uh, in a circular motion so basically it, it goes from 0 to pi to pi then re repeated that means in a circular motion basically the properties are repeated 
So, one rotation is 2 pi radian. So, here, that's why here with a period of 2 pi. Thus, the function in terms of x plus 2 pi is equal to function in terms of x only. Okay, the 2 pi here, basically, when, when it reach uh, 2 pi, the properties of when the, the angle is 0 and angle is 2 pi radian is similar. Okay? So, uh, to f x plus 2 pi equal to function of x will contain an infinite set of functions. So, when you rotate uh, in a trigonometric circle like this, then basically uh, you have an infinite set of functions. A familiar example is the set of trigonometric functions. For example, as an example here, uh, you have 1 over third pi sin x okay then in one rotation you have two x and in n number of rotation you have an x okay the same thing with the cos okay cos x cos 2 pi cos n x that means uh, it can be uh, repeated many times that's why it has an infinite set of function any periodic function can be written as a sum of these functions since uh, uh, rot uh, circular motion as shown previously it can be in sine or cosine so the most general uh, relationship between them is any can be written as in term of sine and cosine so basically the function x equal to summation of a n where a n is a constant uh, divided by third pi sine and x so n is from 0 to infinity that means the the uh, periodic uh, the periodic uh, function from zero to that means you can rotate it as many rotation as you like plus the other one cosine because it, this is basically a, a sinusoidal uh, wave function okay so the most general solution should contain sine and cosine and actually this is called a Fourier series. That means uh, if you repeat, repeat it on and on and on, then basically it form Fourier series. Further, the set of trigonometric function form an autonomous basis since okay, if uh, we have this function, but maybe the 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 trigonometric terms here m and n you put it in a, what do you call it, uh, uh, bra and cat uh, formalism, is equal to the cos uh, function, is equal to zero if m is not equal to n, this means the, the autonomous basis is equal to zero, but equal to one if n is equal to n, that means if they are in the same trigonometric uh, notation and if it is between sine and cosine basically all equal to zero for all m and n so you can see here that uh, the autonomous basis of a periodic function like this will only be equal to one if m equal to n that means that trigonometric terms M and N is similar. Okay? We need to uh, proceed to determine A N and B N. So, we have two uh, constant there. A N and B N. As analogy, for example, uh, the vector R as stated earlier equal to C1 unit vector x plus c2 unit vector y plus c3 unit vector z can be written as r then a dot product of r and unit vector x so this is basically the coefficient of unit vector x so c1 should be equal to dot product of vector r and unit vector x the same thing with y and z okay now the arbitrary periodic function can be written as following the that the similar uh, analogy function equal to the bra of f 
and cat one was at uh, sin x multiplied by one over z pi sin x. So you can see it looks similar to this form as if it is a dot product. Okay, and so on and so forth for 2x, for nx, and even for cos because the function containing both sine and cosine functions. The Fourier coefficient are the inner products of f function x with the appropriate basis function. So basically, uh, a n equal to uh, a, a function in the bra and in the cat is 1 over third pi sin and x it is equal to 1 over third pi then integration from x equal to 0 to 2 pi then function x sins x sits and x dx the same thing for the bn in terms of cosine uh, cosine and x okay Okay, even though the function here is in the bra, when you put it in the integration form, there is no uh, sign here to indicate that it is co conjugate or not because a function can be uh, both in uh, conjugate or conjugate form or in original form. Of course, the trigonometric function are not the only possible basis set. There are many possible basis sets, okay? Recall that for an arbitrary potential B, for example, in the uh, Schrodinger equation, we have this potential B in terms of X. We can find a set of solution uh, psi N in terms of X for the Schrodinger equation. The set of solution will itself form a basis set. That means in the Schrodinger equation, uh, the, the set of uh, solution psi N X by itself, form a basis set. You have here function x equal to summation of n, then the constant cn multiplied by the eigenfunction psi and x. So uh, this I can have a number of uh, 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 depending on number of n. So you have different values of c and psi. Then with the summation of this linear combination of that this, then basically it forms the function fx. As a conclusion, we can find a basis set for any vector space. For any vector space, we can find or we can write down the basis set as a linear combination of the unit vectors. And n-dimensional vector space will have n distinct basis vectors. That means if uh, theoretically we have uh, uh, a situation where we have uh, n dimensions, uh, not only three dimensions but more than three, we still can find uh, the basis vectors, n number of distinct basis vectors. So those are the theoretical uh, formalism, the relationship between a function and the basis sets. Thank you very much for your attention.